Happy Mother's Day 2019. Wow. Give the Lord thanks for the day. God is good. God is good. God is good. As we come into the church, everybody, we get ready to start this morning. It is great to be here. I'm glad to be here. It's inclement outside. It's comfortable in here. Thank God for his blessings. The Lord is good. Some of our friends on um, mission fields are talking about rain seasons and not having tops on their buildings and places they can worship. And when they're there in the hot summer, it's, they have no place to, no air to turn on and no comfort to, to receive. But we are here and we are comfortable, cool in the summer, warm in the winter. Isn't God good? He, he has blessed America. He has blessed America, and I'm thanking God for that this morning. Let's stand together, and let's welcome him here with us today. Our Father, we thank you. We thank you because this day you have given us the most wonderful gifts of life. And when you went to Calvary for us, you did wonderful and marvelous things for us, and we are grateful for that. We ask your blessings in this service here this morning. Bless our mothers, all of them, and all the people in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Let's sing and worship him. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me he's under my feet he's under my feet he's under my feet he's under my feet Satan is under my feet one more time I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me what he stole from me took back what he stole from me well I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me he's under my feet he's under my feet he's under my feet he's under my feet Satan is under my feet can you sing it to him I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me Took back what he stole from me Took back what he stole from me Well, I went to the enemy's camp And I took back what he stole from me He's under my feet He's under my feet He's under my feet He's under my feet Satan is under my feet. Come on, we're going to try this again. How many of you will put your hands together for today? How many of you know that Satan is under your feet today? Greater is he that is what? Come on. Greater is he that is than he that is in the world. Are you glad to be here today worshiping? Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Well, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, there was. 
was a lame man outside the gate begging off of those that entered in. Peter and John, they came upon him and he was expecting the thing. Peter said, silver and gold, have I done but such a have, I give it unto thee. The Holy Ghost, it touched the man, he leaped to his feet, saying, look what God's done for me. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He's day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, I was bound by chains of darkness. I had no hope, no peace of mind. Though my skins were red as scarlet, he washed them white as snow, and he opened my blinded eyes. Now my soul will rejoice. I made him my choice. I've got joy, peace, and hope within. My name's been written in the last book of life. Can you see what God's done for me? Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, has he done anything for you today? The Bible said, clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God. Does anybody have a shout to God this morning? Lord, we worship you. How many of you glad today that when you're sick, he's your healer? Come on, when you need deliverance, he's your deliverer. When you need peace, he's the peace that passes all understanding. Let's sing it one more time and worship the Lord. Well, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Lord, we worship you today. How many of you know today that Jesus is to be worshipped? When we think about the design of God and why we were created, we weren't created to take up space. We were created to worship. God's whole intent of putting humanity was here is that somebody would praise him. And you know what? This morning, that somebody is going to be me. Is that somebody going to be you? This song just says, I'm no longer a slave to fear. How many of you glad this morning that you're no longer a slave to what the devil's had you bound with? Just says... You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. Too long, my fears are gone. Can you sing it again? Unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. Till all my fears are gone, I know. Yeah. 
am a child of God. How many of you are glad you're his children? And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love has called my name. I've been born again into a family. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer a slave. a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Into a family, your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. and sing it to me. I am a child of God. Sing it this morning. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child Today you're a child of God. Oh, 
at his voice Who trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God Oh, we'll see how great How great is our God Jesus in everything we do. The song just says, You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea. Lord, you walk with me through fire.
time. Can you lift your voice and sing? You hold my every moment. Lord, you calm my raging sea. true for you today. Will you lift your hands all over this house to me? He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all today we want to encourage you to give and God will bless you in your gift of giving and we want to thank those that uh, help us on online that 
give. Mike Lowe this week, thank you for giving. And we appreciate all the, the, the gifts of God and the gifts of the people that contribute to the work of God. If you want to give electronically, you can give back in the corner here electronically. And if you want to give online, go to our website, Church of Joy, C-O-J-K-Y, Kentucky, C-O-J-K-Y, at dot com. And you will pick us up there in the top right-hand corner. You can find a place there that will say to give. And we appreciate your gift. If you can't be here, we appreciate your going online and making your contribution to the church. They're going to come now to receive the tithe and the offering. And God bless you as you give into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we go a little old school here? Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We will sing and shout the victory While we walk the pilgrim pathway Clouds will over spread the sky But when traveling days are over Not a shadow, not a sign But when we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory Onward to the prize before us Soon His beauty we'll behold And soon those pearly gates will open We will tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. It's onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be whole. Soon those pearly gates will open. See you. 
After service, we will be checking Lois's ID because I don't believe she's 80. I don't think she knows her. <laughs> oh, you just wanted the flowers. Okay, now we've got the message. So, you 21-year-old fathers, you know how to get the Father's Day gift. You say, I'm 83. All right, great to be here this morning. Any first-time guest with us today? Daryl, nice to see Daryl Meredith here with us this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Amen. If you would fill out that card, be so kind to fill that out and leave it with us. We would appreciate that so much. <clears throat> I'm going to take you into our text this morning and... Uh, I know that it is hard to imagine that on Mother's Day that we're not going to talk about Mother's Day. But I've talked about Mother's Day so many years until I can't think of anything new to say. In fact, I've been talking so many years I can't hardly ever think of anything new to say. I just have to keep adding to the same old stuff. But it is great this morning to be in the house of God. And I'm going to talk to you about something that is very necessary in our world today, and perhaps over the next few weeks we may talk on the same topic, and that is to have hope in a hopeless world. If there is anything the world is in need of today, it is in need of having hope. Young people need hope. Moms and dads need hope. Grandparents need hope. We need some form of security that we believe that things can get better. In our lives, things can be better. And we are highly blessed of God today. Are you highly blessed of God today? Amen. If you are here in the house of God, you have family members with you, and you have the sanity to want to serve Jesus Christ, you are a highly blessed man or woman. Because there's a lot of people today that have not made that decision to turn their faith to God. I'm going to turn you this morning in a few moments to 1 Peter chapter 3. You can turn your Bibles there or turn on your phones or your iPads or there's everybody's got something to turn on. And uh, we'll follow in the scripture as we read here this morning. These verses gives us two great blessings. It mentions to us two great blessings that are upon or overshadowing every believer today. We are so eternally grateful to God that God has been kind to us, to me, to you, to all of us, and God has given us the hope of a life beyond this that the Bible said if in this life only we had hopes in Christ, we would be among all men most miserable. We don't want to live just in the security of today. We want to believe in the longevity of tomorrow the upcoming week, the months, and the years that are ahead of us, if the Lord tarries His coming. In 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning in verse 12, I will read verse 12 and verse 15. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Now I want you to look at what an amazing promise that Peter is writing here to us when he says to us that God is always looking down upon us. He is always looking down upon us. And when he looks down upon us, he is watching over us with his eye of protection, his eye of blessing, and God is always there to give us his vast benefits. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. I believe that. And God is good. God is merciful and God is kind. Then the second thing, 
He says, the ears, his ears are open uh, unto your prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Byron, will you come to the computer over here, please? The, uh, uh, we, we, we need the spirit and the presence of God to be with us today. Do you believe that? I believe that. And so the writer is saying to me, he is saying to each one of us today that there are two things that you can count on as a believer. Number one, you can count on that the eyes of God are constantly scanning your life. They're looking at the steps ahead of you. They're looking at the steps behind you. They're watching you and protecting you all around you. And so what a wonderful, wonderful promise that is. The eyes of the Lord are upon you. Then the second thing he says is that his ears are open unto your prayers, which means that I don't have to have time to prime up a prayer. When I begin to pray, if I am a child of God and I am considered the righteousness of God, his ears are always there to hear what I have to say. God is concerned about my prayer. Then in verse 15, he says to us, Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer. Be ready always to give an answer. I have all these verses back there. And be ready always to give an answer. Uh, to every man that ask you a reason of hope, of the hope. Everybody say hope. Be ready to give an answer to every man that ask you for the reason of your hope. I believe what that verse is saying to me is this, and then I'm going to preach to you. It is saying that in a hopeless generation, in a hopeless period of time, in a time in which the world cannot find the security and hope that it is looking for, that the world is looking for somebody that possesses hope, that they can go to them and say to them, where did you get your hope? Where did your hope come from? And we as believers should be ready at all times to give them an answer and be able to say unto them, my hope, my assurance, my confidence, my stability, my forwardness, it comes from God Almighty. I get my hope from God. I am secure because of God. Now, let me preach to you here for a short while this morning. We live when in a realm or a dimension of hope. Believers live in that dimension today. And in the middle of a world that is filled with absolute hopelessness, there is still hope in the body of God and for the believer that you can believe God that he is watching over you at every moment of your life. I believe he is watching after my family. I believe that he is watching after my grandchildren and my children. And so he says to me, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, meaning set God aside, put him there, dedicate him to your heart. And when you dedicate him to your heart, you're going to be able to give other people an assurance that God has given you that God will be just as good for them as he was for you when you came to him. So in the middle of a world that is filled with hopelessness, the cry of the world today to the church is not to give me more position, not give me more responsibility necessarily, but offer to me something that will give me hope. And if you can give me hope, I'm willing to assume responsibility and duty if you'll just somehow give me hope. In the past few years, our world has experienced massive amount of uncertain times. We have been through some of the most horrific, difficult moments that a person could hardly imagine being in. Prior to 1995, you heard of mishaps and you heard of some lunatic going crazy and doing some kind of an off-the-wall thing, but it wasn't massive until about the year of 1995. That was the year 
when a rental box truck pulled up in front of a large uh, government office building in Oklahoma City. The driver got out, walked away, and the explosives totally destroyed that huge government building that day, leaving 168 people dead and hundreds of people wounded severely that have suffered even to this day from the things that they had suffered. From there, we stepped to 9-11 a couple of years later when our world and our nation began to feel a vulnerability that it had never felt before. We had never known such an attack. We had never believed that the forces of foreign soil could walk into the great United States of America and invade this country and bring about the massive destruction that it brought on the day of 9-11. And from that event, our world began to change. Things began to change that we had never seen before. <clears throat> we have witnessed and walked through events like the Boston uh, Marathon when it was bombed and people lost legs and lives and major things happened because of that great catastrophic terroristic event of that day in Boston, Massachusetts. Since that moment, all across this nation, churches have been invaded synagogues have been destroyed, and mosques have been bombed. We have experienced one problem after another. And there is something to be said this morning about the fact that regardless of what happens in life and regardless of what happens in this world, we have not lost sight of in whom we believe and in whom we trust. I will not trust in horses. I will not trust in chariots. I will put my faith and trust in God. He is big enough to take care of me. Since those events, we have seen mass shootings in our schools that have riddled the lives and the health of our children. Starting in 1999, about the same period of time in Columbine. Not to say it had never happened before, but we had never seen the masses of that kind of a situation like happened that day in Columbine. Since that time, the same thing has been copycatted in the states of Kentucky and California and Colorado. In the far state of Washington, back to the east to Virginia, to the north, east to New York, Florida, Texas, Minnesota, Oregon, and different states of the nation have had invaders that have walked into our schools and have taken the lives of our innocent children that we're doing absolutely nothing to deserve that. In the middle of all of that, we are facing worldwide catastrophic weather events that we have never seen the equivalent to until this last moment and last day. We are seeing tsunamis come. I didn't even know what that was. I thought it was something you'd make a sandwich out of when I first heard it. Then all of a sudden, I hear tsunami here, tsunami there. I had no idea what it was. And all of a sudden, we begin to hear of it more and more often. We begin to hear of more typhoons, more hurricanes out on the waterfronts along our land inland like we live. We are seeing more and more massive fires like across the state of California and through our great west and central United States. We're seeing massive tornadoes unequal to any period of time in history of mankind. What is it that we're living in? We are seeing the last great satanic attack to try to bring down the faith of the church and to believe that we are in a state of hopelessness. I am telling you, young person, I'm telling you, teenager, mom and dad, our grandparent, regardless of where you put your faith, if your dependence is in God, God never lets you down. God will be there. He's a security, he's your hope, he's your tomorrow. I will trust in God. Hallelujah. According to the scripture, there will be many more times of uncertainty that will come upon the world as we know it today. But our hope as believers is not in this world. Our hope is in God. Our belief is in God. My trust is in God, who not only has my today, but he has his touch 
on the heartbeat of my tomorrow. He is a God that looks out of the heaven and looks down upon me. He sees not only the steps I took yesterday and this morning, he sees the steps I will take in the afternoon and tomorrow. He has massive control of all things. My hope is in him, not in the houses, not in lands, not in automobiles. My faith is in God. The events that are happening globally around us today, they're all significant. They're significant because they are steps bringing us closer to the conclusion of history. They're bringing us to the showdown of the time in which the power of the Antichrist will step to the forefront and try to take total control of this world. That's a description that is left to us inside of the Scripture. In the middle of all of this, non-Christians today are feeling a state of hopelessness. I want to tell you this. I am not feeling hopeless. I'm not feeling downcast. I'm not feeling weaker than yesterday. I'm not feeling inferior. I feel the superior power of the anointing of Jesus Christ is just as dynamic, just as powerful, just as great in 2000, or 2019 as it was in 1965, 66, 1970, or any other time. The power of Jesus Christ still marches to victory today, and I will march with the army that's never fallen and never been defeated. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are experiencing radical changes in our life, and as a result of radical changes, the world is suffering under the spirit of anxiety. We have incre increased terrorism that is bringing attacks on our nation, and as a result of that, Fear has gripped the heart of many people, and we wonder, where do I go from here? The question is, can I make the world better, and can I find a hope of a better world for my children to be raised in? I want to tell you, you can't necessarily change the scope of the world, but you can certainly change the scope of the world that you live in, that world that is in the dimension. See, we are in a world that's separate from the world of the nations that we know around us. We are in that providential place with Jesus Christ. I have found hope. I have found security. I have found my position. And when I run into the presence of Jesus Christ, I feel no weapon formed against me can prosper. Everything must come down for the name of Jesus is a strong tower. And when I run into that name, I have safety. Giving praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah. I want to trust in God. I want to rely upon God. I want to depend upon Him. Can we find hope for our future? Absolutely. But our hope is not in things. It's not in finances. It's not in homes. It's not in automobiles. My hope is in Him. Number one, we are living in a hopeless world. We understand that. God understands the need of hope and that hope is necessary in the world for the people and the people that are in it today. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 13 and in verse 12, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Hope that is deferred maketh the heart sick. Now think about this. Whenever you delay hope, when you walk through life and you're looking at the circumstances of your environment, you're looking at the conditions of things around you, it is easy for you to walk into a state of despair, discouragement, or even disgust until you lose a hope. Where do I go from here? What can I do? And all of a sudden, we find ourselves feeling that we are being overshadowed by the spirit of hopelessness. But the Bible said that when hope becomes delayed, it becomes deferred. When it becomes delayed or becomes overdue, our heart will become sick. There are many things that can make our lives shatter, that can shatter our hope. Number one, you can get up one morning, find a lump on your body, and find out that your health has just physically left you. You'll find yourself going after operation after operation. Maybe you are suffering from an illness of which you may never recover, and you are in need of something from God. You need hope. I need hope. 
I may lose my health, but God don't let me lose my hope. I've got to I've got to hold on to my hope. Sickness can destroy and shatter your hope. Disease and disaster can do that. Broken homes when a child comes home, and I understand that, and their their family is broken up. It does something to their life. Broken lives because of drug addictions or because of alcoholism or because of crime or because of desertion by someone that you care about. When your lives become broken, you suddenly find yourself falling back and hope begins to fade away. God, I need hope. I don't need to lose my umbrella. I need to leak. I need to hold on to my protection. And whenever people have broken dreams, maybe you had aspiration of a great ambition, but you've lost that great ambition. You've had a life failure that you cannot pick back up, or you suffered a major defeat in life that you cannot get over. These are symptoms of our modern world today that have lost their hope in life. God help us to understand greater than our physical health, greater than our home, greater than our lives, greater than our dreams is my faith in God. He carries me through the weak and dark moments of life. Give him praise. We cannot live without hope. It is said that a man could live at least 40 days without any food. It is said that he could go as long as eight days without drinking a drop of water. He might go as long as four minutes without air and oxygen in his body. But you can't live but a few seconds without hope. The moment that hope leaves, the moment that your tomorrow and your vision of today leaves, your life begins to shatter and begins to break away from you. I've got to understand what hope is all about. I've got to put my ultimate trust in God. Give him one more praise here this morning, will you? <clears throat> Number two, I've got to understand hope, and I've got to have hope in a hopeless world. Whenever I say hope, and we talk about hope, what does hope really mean? When we express that, how would we verbalize our meaning of the word hope? I want to tell you what hope is. Hope is the, the, when you are able to live with a confident, you're able to live in a confident expectation. That's hope. When you look and you are expecting or wanting or needing things out of life and you see no way to get them, no way to have them, no way to trust for them, and you begin to lose hope, all of a sudden you have lost your confidence in life. But whenever you say, I need this, I can't get it, I don't have the ability to get it, but God does. When you have hope in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ will always give you a confident expectation. I don't mean to rethrash something, but when I was terminal with cancer, I never lost hope. There was never a minute that I lost hope. I believed all the time that the answer could come and the answer would come. It was delayed but it finally showed up just in time. I'm still here. If I live to the 14th day of next month, I will be 72 years old. That's young, isn't it? Yeah, that's young if you're 90. But, but you see, I understand life is moving on. But I thank God this morning that I can walk in here and tell you I don't feel one pain in my body. I don't feel any problems. I am strong. I may leave here today, but I'm going to leave here feeling strong. Thank God for a good life, and thank God for good health. I have confidence. I was confident that God would show up. I did not know how. I did not know where. I did not know when. But I knew that I could have confidence in God. Whenever you could take and take a positive vision of an unforeseen future. I don't know where my steps will lead me tomorrow, but my faith today gives me a positive attitude that no matter where I step tomorrow, the steps of a good man or a good woman have been ordered by God. I have his instruction. I have his word. I have trust 
and faith in Him. In other words, if it's storming outside, the lightning is flashing, the car won't start, I've got no way to town, I've got no way to get around, and I don't know where my next help is going to come from, I can say with others, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I can say I know who holds tomorrow. Yeah. Hallelujah. <coughs> In Titus chapter 1 and verse 2, a part of that verse says this, We have the hope of eternal life. Thank God. We have hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie, God who cannot lie. Now think about that, my friend. When Jesus Christ came to live on the inside of you, he gave you a hope of eternal life. I don't know what eternal life is. I've never lived eternally. I've, I've lived, lived a good, good part, part of it. 72 years is a long time, but I'm not through yet. And I don't understand what eternity is about. But the God who cannot lie has said to me, I give you a promise, and I've given it to you before the world began. And that promise is that if you'll walk with me, fellowship with me, be with me, be a partner with me, I'm going to take you to a region beyond this one. Hallelujah. That the gates of hell cannot prevail against. It is a place where no sickness, no death, no pain, no suffering will ever come. I am taking you into the glory of the world to come. I don't know what streets of gold look like, but one day I will. I don't know what walls of jasper will feel like, but one day I will touch them. I don't know what gates of pearl will look like, but thank God, one day my eyes will behold them. I'm headed for a city that hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. I refuse to give up on my dream. Hope this morning is not a dream. It's not a, va a vague aspiration. It's not a want. It's not just a desire. Hope lays into something and gets a hold of something that can say, Hey, guy, this is real. Hope is not just things that, can, uh, that you can get up in the morning and say, I hope everything goes okay today. No, hope turns that word of hope. Things turn out okay into my hope is that everything will work together for the good to them that love God. And no matter what the enemy meant for evil, God will make it for good. And when the enemy would like to have destroyed me, he can't because greater is my God than all of my enemies. I'm marching to victory in Jesus' name. We are having absolute certainty that God is good. It's having absolute certainty that his promises are true. And Jesus himself is our hope. Thirdly and last, we can possess hope in the middle of a world that's filled with hopelessness. Remember these words. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are ever scanning your walkway. God is watching God sees you tomorrow. God sees your next hour. God sees you uh, along the way. And God is forever watching over you. I need hope. I need confident hope. I can't live without hope. The world needs more people today that are full of a confident hope in God, that they can share that with the insecurities of our world around us and let them know that God is good. As Jeremy comes up to the music, I'm going to read for you or quote for you out of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11, 12, 13, and 14. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. The grace of God means you didn't deserve it, you did nothing to earn it, you did nothing to ever put yourself in a position to where God should have ever given you a second thought. God could have walked away from you, penalized you with hell for eternity, and you would have had exactly what you deserved to get. Same with me. Same with all of us. But rather than that, the grace of God 
the grace of God, the favor of God has appeared to every person in this building this morning, in the world. God somewhere has dealt with every person's life. Across this audience this morning, this is your time. The grace of God is appearing in this place. And God is saying, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the waters of life freely. Verse 12 said, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that means worldly desires, we should live righteously, godly, and soberly, which means sensibly. We should live sensibly in this present world. Not in the world to come. It's going to be all right when you get over there. But in this world, God will give you something to teach you how you ought to conduct yourself in this present world. Then he says in verse 13, looking, oh yes, looking for that blessed hope. Everybody say, blessed hope. Oh, come on, blessed hope. Oh, yes, I'm looking for that blessed hope. Hallelujah. And the glorious appearing, the glorious appearing. I'm looking. That is my blessed hope. I live every day watching the eastern sky. I may not be standing here gazing that direction, but my heart is always looking that way because one day that sky is going to open and I'm going up to be with my Jesus. Oh, that's my hope. That's my life. And I'm living in that blessed hope that the glorious appearing of my great God, Jesus Christ, is going to come back and I shall behold him and I'll see the face of him that the world rejected. And I'll see the scars of him that the world crucified. And I'll hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I'm headed for that city. I'm headed for that city. As we stand together in this building this morning, you have the wonderful opportunity right now today, at this very moment, to turn your faith to God. And I want you, I want you, if you're in this building, and there is even an inkling of an idea, you say, oh, I'm already a Christian. That's all right. That's all right. You still need to turn faith to God. I want you to come, and I want you to bow your knee before the presence of God. And I want you to begin to pray, God, I need hope in the middle of a hopeless world. I need hope. Build my hope. Build my security. Build who I am. Right now, this is your time. Is there a person in this building? Is there a person, mom, dad, young person, teenager, whomever, will you come and seek after the Lord? Go ahead and sing. This is your invitation. My God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He looks out for me, Jehovah John.
Sweet she is my El Shaddai He looks out for me Jehovah Jireh He is my God Oh, why should I worry about the highs and the lows The ups and the downs When by my faith I know my God is more than enough He can supply all my needs He is my El Shaddai He looks out for me Jehovah Jireh today you have families to visit mothers to see god bless you you're very fortunate if you have a mother to see today amen i hope the afternoon is good for you and you have a great day don't forget bible study 10 o'clock on tuesday morning and six o'clock on wednesday night that's at 10 o'clock tuesday morning and also at six o'clock on wednesday night god bless you god bless you god bless you in jesus name thank you daryl for being here this morning